Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today, yet again, we'll hit Alibaba stock, the stock that just won't stop falling. Year to date, the stock is down over 46.81%, and over the past one year, the stock is down an incredible 53.62%. A lot of investors feeling a lot of pain right now. I know a lot of people that own this stock, and a lot of losses being incurred. So today, I'm going to be breaking down the business for you, focusing on all the key factors, its profitability, management, strength, growth, and give you a current valuation and price target for Alibaba going forward, telling you if the stock is a buy, hold, or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, if you own Alibaba stock, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Opening up our screen here, since we last looked at Alibaba, they've had their quarterly earnings. So we're gonna have a look at how those change in numbers have affected the company's valuation going forward. Of course, we're gonna start off by looking at the financial strength of the business. And when assessing the financial strength, of course, there's one key metric we focus on, and that's the cash to debt ratio. And once more, the same cash to debt ratio as last time, the cash to debt ratio for Alibaba is 3.03, .03, indicating a great degree of financial stability for the company. It indicates that for every dollar of debt the company has on hand, they have about $3.03 .03 to meet that debt obligation. Fantastic financial position, and means they could pay down all their debts instantaneously if they so wished. Um, additionally, also the company's been given a fantastic Altman score, indicating a great degree of safety with the business going forward, and very little risk of financial default going into the future. These numbers, once more, although favourable, the key risk with Alibaba isn't to do with these numbers. It's not to do with financial strength. Alibaba is obviously in a fantastic financial position, it's a very, very strong entrenched company. The risks are to do with the environment in which it operates, and the regulatory environment around the business. So once again, on financial strength, the business is doing fine. Financially, it looks great, but you need to be thinking about the Chinese president bearing down on this company more so than you're thinking about the numbers. Profitability is a slightly different story. If we move over to profitability, of course, when assessing the profitability of a business, we focus on the operating margins, net margins, returns on equity, and returns on assets. And we've got those four numbers here. So on operating margins basis, they've got operating margins of 10.69, net margins of 15.28, return on equity of 13.42 and returns on assets of 7.65. On an operating margins basis, these operating margins are quite frankly disappointing. Think about the nature of Alibaba's business. It's a platform business. It's not like Amazon where they've got the logistical networks and such. It's a platform business on which they facilitate the exchange of goods and services. Operating margins of only 10% and net margins of only 15% for a platform business, quite frankly, is underwhelming. I'd like to see these margins more up around 20% or 30% in a business of this nature going forward. Returns on equity and returns on assets figure, once again, are underwhelming. Of course, when we're assessing returns on equity, returns on assets, we typically look for numbers around 20%. 20% return on equity, 20% return on assets. But right now, returns on equity for the business are only 13.42%, and returns on assets, 7.65. Returns on equity is, a closer, is obviously closer to our target, uh, but still not quite there. And thus, from a profitability standpoint and a return on equity standpoint, the business isn't super appealing. Once more, that returns on asset number of 7.65 is even lower, um, and thus even less appeal for the business. So right now, from a profitability standpoint, despite the potential undervaluation of the business, which we'll get onto later in our DCF analysis, I'm not too attracted to Alibaba as a business. These operating margins and net margins are low, and the returns on equity and returns on assets are well below my 20% target. But if we move down here to some basic valuation metrics, we can see down here, we've got some basic numbers down here. We've got quick ratio, current ratio, P ratio, P ratio, PB ratio, PS ratio, cash ratio, all these very fancy, fancy numbers. But really, there's only one metric I focus on when assessing the nature of a business, and that's the PE ratio. And the current PE ratio for Alibaba is 17.66. Once again, the same as last time, a very, very low PE. This indicates naturally that the business may be undervalued. You think about the environment in which Alibaba operates. It's a, it's a growing environment. The Chinese economy is growing more and more and more, and thus the nature of Alibaba's business should be following that secular trend, growing with it. But this PE ratio doesn't symbolize that. A PE ratio of 17.66 you'd often associate with a company that's no longer growing, a mature business such as like a bank or a large insurance company, something that's no longer growing their revenues. But that's quite the opposite with Alibaba. Both the environment in which it operates and the nature of its e-commerce business model would infer it will be growing more and more going forward, but this PE doesn't represent that. So that lower PE may give you an indication of whether the business is over or undervalued right now. But as I said, later on, we're going, we're go, later on, we're going to get into more detailed DCF valuation, breaking down the company's free cash flow and earnings per share, giving you, more, giving you a more clear idea of what the business is actually worth. So stay tuned for that one. Coming down over here to some basic financial metrics, we've got the revenue and net income between 2010 
and 2021. And you can see there's been astonishing growth between 2010 and 2021. Back in 2010, revenue was around 1,000 and net income of 269. And at present, revenue is around 110,000 and net income of 23,000. So looking back there, that's more than, yeah, astonishing, astonishing growth over the past 10 years, both on a revenue basis and a net income basis. And that's indicative once more of both the nature of Alibaba's business model. You look at the e-commerce space over the past 10 years, massive, massive growth. And also that's tied to China's economy over the past 10 years, massive, massive growth. And those two secular trends have powered the business going forward over the past decade. Coming over here on a cash to debt basis, you can see cash to debt, a similar trend. Back in 2010, cash was around 1500 and debt of around thirteen, And now in 2021, cash of around 74000 and debt of around 27000 Of course, more debt on the balance sheet, but also a much larger cash balance to meet that debt obligation. Again, once again, on a financial basis, I have no doubts about the stability of Alibaba as a business. All my risks, all my concerns revolve around the environment in which it operates and the regulatory regime bearing down on the business. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see returns on capital was fantastic between 2010 and 2014. They have returns on capital in the mid 20s to even 42, with a high of 42 in 2014. Uh, but then the subsequently declined following 2014. From 2015 onwards, they've had substantially lower returns on capital. Returns on capital of around 10, 5, 3, and even negative and zero figures over the past four years. This is a signal that Alibaba's management have suddenly become incompetent and no longer know how to run their business properly. I don't quite think so. I think it's indicative of the business investing more and more and more in capital infrastructure to build out their business. It's not so much a dying business, as these numbers may indicate. It's not, not a dying business at all. What it, what it indicates is the business investing more and more and more in capital infrastructure to expand out their business going forward. So I'm not too concerned about the low returns on capital. For a growth business, this is quite normal to see, um, and I'm fine with that going forward. Have a quick look at the Peter Lynch chart here. You can see between, you can see between 2016 and 2018 here, 16 and 2019, you can see the price line and the, you can see the median PE line and the Peter Lynch earnings line were below the stock price, indicating a high degree of growth assumption priced into the stock. When we see these earnings lines below the price line, that indicates that the stock has a high degree of growth potential price thing going forward. Investors believe that the stock is going to grow and exponentially so over the next few years, and thus the price line exceeds these earning lines, indicating a more premium valuation. But from about 2020 onwards, since the onset of these regulatory concerns and what have you, uh, the price line has exceeded, so the earnings, the earnings line has exceeded the price line, indicating a degree of undervaluation in the stock. You can, see the, you can see the earnings line right now sits around 299 and the price line, of course, right now is around 120 the current stock price, indicating a great degree of deviance between the earnings line and the price line and a potential degree of undervaluation within the business. But those, of course, are the basic metrics we use to evaluate a business. If we wanted to get more detailed, we could run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. Um, as Warren Buffett always says, you know, the, the fairest way to value a business just come down here, show you the DCF. As Warren Buffett always says, the fairest way to value a business is to look at the cash flows it's producing and how much cash flow will the business return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. That is exactly what a DCF tells us. So we're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in and how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to grow and expand their business going forward. If we come down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. We can see on an earnings per share basis down here, they've got a 10-year growth rate of 53.7%, a 5-year growth rate of 22.6%, and a 1-year growth rate far, far lower of 0.6%. Um, so taking into account these growth rates, we could base our calculation solely off these numbers. We could say take a reasonable growth rate of around 22.6% over the past years, and we could pull that out over the next 10 years and then give us a valuation for Alibaba. I don't think that's quite fair. Um, I think given the regulatory environment in which Alibaba operates and the various threats bearing down on the business, we can't input a growth rate that high. If we input a growth rate that high, it would assume the operating environment with very few threats, in which they have effectively have the freedom to run and grow freely. They simply don't. You look at other competitors like JD.com, Pindodo, these other large, large firms, even Amazon, which may decide to move into the Chinese market at some time, there's a lot of competitive threats around Alibaba as a business. And thus, inputting a growth rate around 22%, 20%, would not sufficiently take these risks into account. I think a better growth rate for the business would be something around 15%. That takes into account more of these external risks. So we're going to use a 15% growth rate. We're going to input 
So we're going to use a 15% growth rate. 15% growth rate in our calculation over here. A discount rate of 8%. 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market. And that's a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. And then our earnings per share figure of $6.97 taken down here of a 12 month trailing basis. So utilizing those three figures, we come out to a massive price target once again of $206.88, indicating a massive degree of undervaluation in Alibaba. This is pretty much what people already knew, but we're gonna run through the numbers and I'll give you my opinion at the end. I think it's already pretty clear that Alibaba is an undervalued business, um, but I'm gonna run both an earnings, but I'm also gonna run a free cash flow analysis to show you how much it's worth on free cash flow, and then I'm gonna give you an opinion on whether or not you should buy the stock going forward. So we've got that massive price target of $206.86, that's on an earnings per share basis. And that's usually how we value a business of Alibaba's nature, a growing company. Earnings per share usually gives us a better valuation of that type of business. But we're also gonna run a free cash flow analysis. So if we switch over to free cash flow and we come down here, we've got our free cash flow growth rates. For the past 10 years, it's been 51.4%, five years, 28.3%. And over the past one year, once again, a much lower figure of 2.6%. So taking into account the same factors we did with earnings per share, I think the competitive environment and the regulatory environment in which Alibaba operates doesn't allow it to have a growth rate as high as this. I don't think growth rates for free cash flow will hit 30%. And thus, I'm going to utilize once again that 15% growth rate. So we, so we utilize that 15% growth rate here. Oh, not 16, 15. 15% growth rate, a discount rate of 8%, and then our free cash flow figure of $11 a share, taken down here for 12 months trailing basis. So utilizing those three numbers here, we come out to an even higher price target of $326.96. Ridiculous upside in the stock. That's almost 3x upside from where the stock is right now. So as most investors already knew, on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, and on pretty much any metric you use to value this business, Alibaba is undervalued. On an earnings per share basis, it's worth about $206. Free cash flow basis worth about $326. And it trades at a current price of around $120. So you do the math, you calculate the upside. Massive opportunity here on a financial basis. My issue with Alibaba and the reason I sold out of the stock at $180, I simply cannot accurately quantify the risks that Chinese regulators pose to the business. Um, it could go as far, I, th I can see it going as far to the point that Alibaba is asked to delist from the New York Stock Exchange. And also even worse, that Alibaba's profitability as a company may be severely, severely regulated by the government regulators. You look at what they did to the education companies. They said to them, you can no longer be profitable. I could see the same thing happening to Alibaba. Them bearing down on the business and saying, no, you can't make money. No, you can't be profitable anymore. And then what happens to the value of the stock? The stock's already down more than 50% on the year. And I could see even more downside if that was to happen. For me, the risk to reward ratio with Alibaba simply isn't worth it. Is the stock undervalued? Yes. And that is attracting the, the more simplistic value investor that sees an undervalued stock and thinks buy and hold, uh, it'll rise back up. But the situation is simply not as simple. There are too many prevailing risks for me to see it as a viable investment. Too many risks that I'm not willing to undertake when I have far better opportunities present. Although Alibaba is massively, massively undervalued on a financial basis right now, these prevailing external risks simply cannot be ignored. And that's why I'm staying away from the business right now. I'm simply not touching it. Other investors may feel like they need to try their hand, that they need to hold it and try to ride out the storm. All power to you. I respect the people that own the stock and I respect the people that have a long-term perspective with the holding, but I simply right now cannot buy the stock myself. I believe these prevailing risks with the Chinese regime simply aren't worth it. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Alibaba stock, a stock that is obviously massively, massively undervalued. Although financial strength is, fan financial strength is fantastic, profitability, mediocre, um, but that undervaluation is apparent and everyone knows it. Everyone knows the stock is cheap right now. It's the talk of the world. Every value investor is thinking about buying it. But for me, as an investor that not only looks at the financial stability of a company, but also the regulatory environment in which it operates, I simply cannot buy the stock. The potential for the stock to fall more is highly, highly present. And I simply can't justify to myself buying a stock that operates in an environment where the regulatory bodies within that country can say to the company, you no longer can be profitable, or you no longer can grow as fast as you once did. When you get into that type of regulatory environment, stocks of, that, stocks of this nature simply become uninvestable. No disrespect to anyone who owns the stock. I owned the stock at one point before this whole regulatory storm came to power. But for me, I'm staying away from the stock right now. If you want to hold it, if you want to try and ride out the storm, all power to you. There are massive, massive risks with this stock. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you learn something more about the business you're thinking about buying, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a video you want me to, if there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then just comment it down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you and I'll see you in the next one.